Hello. We're going to talk about model selection. So we've got ourselves into a situation where we have um, a data set. We've got a variable, a response variable, that we want to be able to explain or predict. And we've got a bunch of potential explanatory variables. And uh, we don't really know which ones are going to be the best explanatory variables or not, or not so useful, or which set of them are going to be the most useful for explaining that response variable. <clears throat> and so you're going to first have to realize that we're in a non-ideal situation already. Um, but you know this this situation occurs sometimes. Sometimes we collect data and we don't totally understand the data that we collect, or you know even the questions we've collected it it for. So um, we get we can get ourselves into the situation where we have to kind of look through those explanatory variables uh, and find a set that is you know the best at explaining that response variable. That's what Steffi talked about in the lecture. I'm going to show you some of the ways that one can do that in R. Important to note that I'm not an expert in this area. I don't um, use it in my research regularly, and that's the usual way I learn about things when I use them um, in my research. <clears throat> so um, um, this won't be the most in-depth of um, dives into model selection in R, um, in fact, it'll be just enough to make you really dangerous, give you the, give you the tools, um, and um, you go away and um, uh, play with these and, and potentially um, do quite bad things with them. So if you do actually get into doing some serious model selection, um, you'll need to do um, quite a lot more reading about it. Okie dokie. So we're going to work with the body fat data, the data that contains measures of body fat, which is quite difficult to measure, requires special instrumentation, and lots of other measures about um, people, about an individual. Uh, measures that are quite easy to make, like weight and height and the circumference of the wrist and such like. Uh, and the question there is, which of those uh, sets of explanatory variables can best explain the variability in, in body fat, with the idea that those variables would then be able to predict um, body fat and we wouldn't actually have to measure it all we'd have to do is measure those other variables you've looked at this data set a bit and um, one of the things that you did was plot the correlations between all the possible pairs of um, variables and selected ones that you thought would be particularly um, good or, or were particularly strongly correlated with body fat and therefore probably good predictors um, I think abdomen and weight were um, two of the ones we we thought would be particularly good all right, so what we're going to do in R, in R is a bit more thorough selection of variables that um, give a good um, predictive model or explanatory model. Um, there is a difference between predictive models and explanatory models. Steffi, Steffi talked about that. Um, I'm kind of glossing over it a little bit, but it is, it, is, it is extremely important. And most of everything that I'm going to do in these videos is really finding the best explanatory model. We don't test the model against some new data that we're trying to predict. Uh, so it's explanatory modeling, really. Okie dokie. Um, I think we'll switch to R now and get going. Here it is. We open a new script, as usual. Clear R. As usual. Please excuse me again for not putting copious comments like this clear R, and then, um, for example, load required libraries. Of course, we load the tidyverse. And I think that's all we'll load right for now. There are some other libraries we need, but we'll load them as we go along. <clears throat> the next thing we want to do is load the data set. I'll stop commenting in a second. It's just once I get into the habit, I tend to continue doing it. Load the body fat data. The usual way, import data set from CSV. It's on my desktop here. Okie dokie, bring that in. You can see it's not coming in correctly. Everything is in one column, and that's because, uh, you may remember, we need to switch it from being comma delimited, R's 
look, thinking it's comma delimited, whereas in fact it's tab delimited. That fixes it all. I'm going to call mine DD. I always do that. It's short and sweet. And if I always do it, I always remember it. So I've copied the code that's created. I'll press cancel and oops, paste it here. And I'll run everything. Good. Looks like we have that data set in. Brilliant. Save the script. Let's call it body fat model a selection. I'll put it on my desktop. OK. Now, what we can do is um, Actually, let's, 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 let's start with some manual model selection. What we do is we start with we could start we could start with the um, with nothing in the model, or we could start with everything in the model, uh, and, and then add things or take things away. What we're actually going to do, um, I just decided, is we'll start with everything in the model. So we'll do a linear model with body fat and. See the variables down here, and just type the variables in. <clears throat> We're not going to use density because I think that's just a simple mathematical function of a couple of these. Um, we'll use age plus weight plus height plus neck plus chest plus abdomen plus hip plus thigh onto the next line uh, knee any more yes ankle plus ankle plus biceps plus forearm plus Rest. I think that's it, because uh, these are repeats. We won't use BMI because again, BMI BMI is um, a uh, simple mathematical transformation of two of those other variables. And the data is DD. All right. Let's see if that runs. It does. Now, if we were doing all of this correctly, very correctly, we'd do the model diagnostics of every model we're looking at. Typically, people <laughs> don't do... Well, I can't say that. Um, I suspect that some people don't do that when they're doing model selection because you look so through so many models that we, just, we can't do that model diagnostics. <clears throat> Here we could, um, but for the purposes of just keeping going, I'm, I'm not going to do that for every model that we do. OK, so what we do want to do is look at the summary of that model. Here it is, and uh, we can see uh, that there are uh, abdomen is is very important in this model uh, as we thought it would be. Uh, wrist is as well. We weren't expecting that. Uh, weight isn't perhaps because it's very strongly correlated with abdomen. <coughs> uh, Seventy-five percent of the variability, or seventy-four percent if it's adjusted R squared. Um, is being explained, so that's nearly three quarters, which is actually very good. But perhaps we don't need all of these explanatory variables, and then we have to select one to take out, or more to take out. We'll do one at a time. We'll take one at a time out. One thing we could do is choose the one with the um, the highest p-value, so 0 0.94, it's knee. So the easy way to do this now is to copy all of that, Paste it below, delete knee, and call it M2, or anything else you want to call it. We can run that, and run that. Run that, and run that. Good. Uh, I, I called, last, last time I called it by accident M12, and then of course the summary didn't work. Now it is working. And what can we see? <clears throat> we have a 
almost exactly the same explanatory power, which is what we'd expect if we were removing an unimportant variable. And abdomen is still important. Actually, I think age has become significant. It's just switched over, over the line, over the 0 0.05 line. So there it's 0 0.046. And before, yeah, it was 0 0.056. So you can see sometimes taking a variable out makes other variables more important. So that can happen. Actually, the opposite can happen as well. I think there's an example of that coming up where taking a variable out makes other variables, the, the other variable, some of the other variables that remain in the model less important. Um, both of those are quite possible. And actually, you know, it's always one or the other that happens. It's very infrequent that removing a variable from the model causes absolutely no change in the other variables. And there is a very special case when that occurs, and that, that's in experiments with orthogonal, like uh, variables that are perfectly uncorrelated, where they don't have any effect on each other. That was in one of the boxes in the, uh, the New Statistics with our book. Um, okay, and we can keep going now and removing the the least significant variable. It's 0 0.80 here, that's chest. So we copy this, call it M3, remove chest, run that model. And again, it's caused hardly any change in explanatory power. That's not surprising because it was a relatively unimportant variable. And we can see um, the significance of some of the other variables has changed a bit, not much though. Um, and we could go on and on and on. Let's remove one more, shall we? Uh, 0.49, I think its height is the least significant now. So let's remove height. Call that M4. Height. So. Again, we've still got about 74% of the variance um, that's explained. So again, we're not doing much harm to the explanatory power of the model by removing these variables. It's because they're unimportant variables in the model. Now we could keep doing this and doing this and doing this until all of the, all of the variables left in the model um, were signif are significant. Um, I think if we kept going and doing that, actually I'll just pause the video and I'll type them in so you don't have to watch me do it. Okay, I've just skipped ahead then, typed a few things in. Um, now we've got down to uh, model 7. I've kept removing things until I got to model 7 um, here, run that. And it's a model where everything is either significant or marginally significant. Uh, so I left it at that. One could go further if one wanted to and only um, keep have in the model things that are very significant or quite or, or significant. Um, and also the, the, the p-value is not the only thing that one could do the um, removal based on. The criteria could be other things. The least reduction in R squared one could choose. <clears throat> okay, I've made another model, uh, M8, which doesn't include abdomen. Um, just to show what happens if we remove a, uh, an important variable from the model. Um, well just first of all, you see we're with this model 7, we've still got 74% of the variance explained. Um, so removing all of those variables hasn't um, decreased the explanatory power of the model. Now if we remove abdomen, let's see what happens. We go down to 55. Um, so it's still quite a lot, but removing that variable, it's caused a lot of uh, a reduction in the explanatory power of the model. And I've done one other model here, which is um, maybe something new uh, for you. We haven't, there's no variables on the right hand side of this formula. It, we just put the number one. That means intercept only. It's like fitting the grand mean, a single mean to the whole thing. And if we do that, um, uh, we get only the intercept in, in here. And there's um, well, actually 0% of the variance explained by definition. All right, so we've got all of those models now.
um, we've actually done it. We've kind of done the model selection and ended up with a model that, you know, we might actually just stop here with model, uh, sorry, not model eight. We might stop with model seven and say, cool, that's the end of the process. That is what we're going to report as a good explanatory model. Okay. We might want to, um, when we're reporting this, um, models. We might want to report the models, the summary of all of these models. In order to do that, we put the models together into what's called a list, and we need to name them in that list. M3 equals M3. It's quite a lot of tedious typing in this um, in this code. M6 equals M6. M7 equals M7. M8 equals M8. And M0 equals M0. It's a bit weird. It might look a bit weird. You have to name them like this, but otherwise um, R doesn't know what it's doing. Um, it's like that sometimes. And then we do something called AIC tab mods. I actually think this is not going to work. Yes, error. Could not find function AIC tab. That is because we need a library. This is in an add-on package. And so up here, I'm going to put that package in here, and it's called this one, AIC C mod average, uh, which is AIC C model averaging. Oops. Um, so now it should work. If I run the line, it will work. I loaded the package. Okay, it's taken a little while. So <clears throat> this is the output we get. Model selection based on AICC. Um, so it's not actually doing any model selection. We've told it the models to use. Each model is a row now. You can see um, M0, M8, and then up to M7. K is the number of variables. Uh, um, actually, that's not, that's not quite true. I think it's twice the number of variables. Uh, plus one. Um, I told you I wasn't an expert. Here's the AICC, that's the um, information criteria. This is delta AIC C. So it turns out that model seven has the lowest AICC. That's why it's in the first row. I was put it in the first row. And the difference between and then this delta AIC is the difference between that best model the one with the lowest AIC, and the model in this row. Uh, so they're, they're the same in here, in this first row, so that's zero. And then this 0.11 is the difference in AICC between this model, model six, and model seven. So you can see uh, the difference between 0.8 and 0.91 is 0.11. So as we go down and down and down, through worse and worse and worse models, we see the AICC is increasing. And then suddenly it jumps up to 133. So there's a massive increase in AIC here. And that's because this model, M8, is the one where we just removed abdomen. Um, so that's telling us that this model is much, much worse than any of those above. And um, this one is, is really, really bad, M0. That's the one where we uh, um, modeled only the intercept and none of those explanatory variables. Uh, this is about weights. Uh, the weight of the model, we can use that uh, at a later stage, uh, and the cumulative weight. And this is the log likelihood. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's mod uh, manual model selection. We selected models by removing variables. Like I said, we could select by adding variables. We could do both, add and then select, uh, add and then remove uh, variables. Um, Sorry, we could um, do mod. Well, I'll just repeat that. We could do the model selection by adding variables, starting with nothing and adding variables. We could do the model as we do the model selection as we've done by starting with everything in the model and removing variables, or we could do a bit of both: add a variable, remove a variable, add a variable, remove a variable. Um, this seemed to work okay in in this case. We got um, uh, this model. M7, um, and what we're going to do in the next couple of videos is, is use some different methods 
on, on this data set and see if they give us the same model. So we'll use some different selection, model selection methods, some more automated ones, and see if they give us the same answer.